All right, so today and uh, over the next few days probably, I'm gonna be installing the 14 remote start on my B8.5 2014 Audi S5. And the car is on jack stands for unrelated issues. Uh, you do not need to put the car up on jacks to install the remote start. It's all gonna be done in the engine bay and in the interior. So this video is specifically for the manual gearbox. <clears throat> Much of this will be the same for either the uh, DSG or the manual. However, some of the uh, wiring parts in here are going to be specific to the manual only. So as for the parts you need, you're going to want to get the Fortin Evo 1 box for the manual. Uh, you will not want the Evo All. The Evo All can work, but from my understanding, it is a lot more complicated as it's a less powerful module. Uh, the Evo 1 will work as a remote starter by itself, so you won't need to purchase uh, an extra fob or an extra system. And then you are going to need the uh, Flashlink. Um, I got the Flashlink Manager 4. Um, I, you can get that on Amazon or on Fortin's website or on eBay, really, anywhere. Uh, I will put links in the description for those. And the third thing you will need is the specific Fortin Audi T-Harness. Uh, it goes by AUDT1 or um, AUD-1. It's the T-Harness for the Audi. It's the only one. So uh, you should be able to get that on eBay or I got mine at Walmart, actually. Um, you don't want to order the AUDT1 kit because that one comes with the Evo All. And if you have a manual, as I said, the Evo All is not really what you want to go with uh, unless you already have some other sort of bypass or something like that. All right, so I'm adding this part in uh, after I've completed the install as sort of an overview now that I've done everything and know exactly what's going to be involved. So there is one set of wires on the T-harness that you need to splice together, which you can do before anything is in the car, and that's not too hard at all. And then there are three wires that you need to splice into the car. Uh, I used solder for that. Um, I'm not too sure how you would do it with just a twist connector. Some of these um, connection points are pretty tight, so there's not a whole lot of room for like a butterfly connector or whatever. But it's just three wires that you need to solder into the car. There's one in the engine bay, uh, in the fuse box of the cowl. It's not really a fuse box, but it's the fuses from the positive terminal. One connector there, or connection there, and there are two in the interior for the can high and can low. Um, you can do the can high and can low in one of a couple places, but I ended up doing it above the steering column. I found that to be easier than behind the kick panel. Um, and then for the positive and the ground, uh, those you don't need to solder into the car. Those are just, you wrap them around posts and then screw the nut in that goes around the post and it it's just that connection like that. Ground can go wherever you want, but Positive is pretty easy too. And then uh, for the one in the engine bay, that's the clutch bypass. Uh, so just three wires that you need to solder and the rest is pretty much plug and play. Um, you have to plug it into the key port of the car and that's a bit of a difficult step, but that's it. It's just the key port. Uh, it's the T part of the T harness to the key port. Can high and can low, soldered. Clutch bypass, soldered and then positive and ground are just screwed in. And that's all there is to it. Um, you'll get the, 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 the box with your Evo 1, and you'll see there's like a million wires in there, and it looks really ominous. But 95% uh, of those are not used, and it's really not that bad. So the first step is going to be to remove a lot of the interior bits. I've already done all of that, but it's fairly straightforward. Specifically, we're going to be working around the key port in this section. So the first thing you want to get off is this piece here. And uh, to get to that, you have to lift this piece here and the trim that's on this side, which looks like that. Um, it's fairly straightforward You use one of these trim remover tools, pop those up. Um, then you get this second piece off here, and then you can get, there's a uh, screw here to get this key port cap off. And then after that, uh, you need to get all of the screws off that give access to this uh, big 
panel here. So there are um, a total of eight screws you're gonna remove. There's three of these smaller ones and five of these bigger ones, but it's fairly straightforward. You've got, I think, five down here, just sticking straight up. They're all uh, eight millimeter sockets. You have one uh, over here in the fuse area, which means you have to remove this fuse cover. <clears throat> um, there's one uh, right here behind this piece. And then once you remove this key port cap, there is one here as well. So again, fairly straightforward, but you just want to remove this big um, steering column, basically cover from the bottom. And make sure that when you are removing that, you have unplugged anything from your OBD2 port. Uh, I have a P3 gauge here, um, routed up as you can see. Have to unplug that first so that when you take this panel off, uh, the OBD2 is going to pop down with that. And then you remove this clip and the uh, light connector. Uh, for the OBD2 and the light, uh, they're just they're just connectors. You pull them out with the tabs. Pretty straightforward, so that you can get this whole panel out of the way, so that it should look more or less like this. All right. So the next step is going to be removing the connector behind the key port, uh, and it is back there. You can reach your hand up through this way. It's very difficult to film, but I'll try to get a better angle but you're just gonna sort of have to shimmy your hand in there and it's the port right behind here. All right, so coming down here, <clears throat> this is gonna be very difficult to film, but up here, there is a connector in there. You see the red, it's out of focus at the moment. Uh, up there. That's what you want to remove, that connector. Comes from the key port right up here. Switching vertical for video for the moment, for the sake of uh, my filming capabilities, but this red clip here, you can uh, sort of snake your hand up around here and uh, use your finger to sort of pull it out. And this is the uh, retaining cut, so to focus. There. This retaining clip here is what is holding this, uh, basically, connector into the key port. And then once you have that out, you should be able to pull this connector out and it'll drop down so that we can see it right around here. And uh, to confirm, once you have this red tab out, there is a black clip right there, and there that you gotta push down, push it, you know, away from you in order to pull it out. And it's a very tight spot, very awkward to pull, but uh, you will be able to get it out that way. All right, so if you are like me and you can't get that connector out, then what you're gonna have to do is take the key port out and to do that, you can just push it in this way. And then you're gonna need to remove this, uh, whatever you call this metal piece here. Uh, and I think there are two screws on that that we need to remove. All right, there's gonna be one screw right there. It looks like this. It comes out, it's a 10 mil socket. And the second screw is gonna be back uh, up there. It is an M8 triple square. And as you can see, this one is a much longer screw. I got this piece out, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it, it sucked. Uh, you got to clear <clears throat> this piece here, uh, let me turn the flash on. You have to clear this piece here. Now I guess you could remove this uh, this bar here beforehand, but I really just pulled it really hard and, you know, I got it out. And then uh, you got to really squeeze it to get it out down here, and then you'll be able to get the port. And um, because this connector was so hard to get out, what I ended up basically doing was I took a flathead screwdriver and, and there's a little hole and I basically, it's fine here, went in and put it right here and pushed it up from underneath and that's how I got it out. So, uh, <clears throat> now I'll be able to uh, put this back in and connect our T-harness. So I'm gonna take a moment to explain this mess of wires that is our T-harness and our Evo 1. So first of all, the Evo one is gonna come with a whole bunch of wires in a box. And the only one you need to worry about is the one that has this big port here. And you're gonna plug it into the only place it can go. 
And then there are the, uh, the connectors for the T-harness. So big white one up top. And then on the bottom, you've got the red and the white. There are three more um, connectors here, a black, a black, and a blue. You leave these unplugged according to the instructions. You leave this yellow wire right where it is. And then coming farther down the T-harness, you're gonna unconnect these two uh, because they will come connected, but that's for 2009 to 2010 only. And then there is gonna be uh, this, this white plug here. And then there's one that says EVO 1 and one that says EVO all. Since this is an EVO 1, you're gonna connect the blue wire to the black wire here. This black thing is just a little module. It doesn't, it's not a connector anywhere. And then this right here is the T of the T harness itself where uh, one goes to the key port and, um, and the other one goes to your old, basically uh, harness connector that we just took out. And this looks like a big mess of wires, but what's important to know is that 95% of them will not be used whatsoever. Everything in this bundle here, everything in this bundle here, and I'll get to explaining which ones you will use in a moment. So first of all, uh, you're going to want to go to this top piece and you're going to get this big bundle of wires here. You want to find the one that's purple with a yellow stripe and you want to connect that to the pink wire. So you can do it with a little connector or a twist clip type thing. I soldered it and then I was going to use heat shrink, but my heat shrink kind of shrunk too early. So I put electrical tape on top, so that's the pink wire to the purple with a yellow stripe. And that's the only soldering you're gonna to need to do right around the uh, EVO 1 itself. Then there are just five wires to connect to the car. Yellow goes to clutch, red goes to power, black goes to ground. Um, all of these are unused. And then coming over here, uh, this yellow and blue wire is unused. Those are unused. The only two we need to worry about are the gray with a black stripe and the gray which go to the can high and can low so the only wires that are going to the car are these five over here the rest of these all of these do nothing nothing at all and you can cut them if you want but i saved them in case i was going to need them later and uh so far i don't believe i will but if uh, something changes i'll update you all all right so coming back into the car we're gonna start putting this back together. Now this is gonna be a bit of a mess to uh, to reinstall, especially since we gotta put this piece back in and get the key port back where it came from, but uh, it's at least easy to show. So uh, this is the key port, obviously, and then there's a male and a female. Uh, the female one will go onto your key port here. And then the uh, connector that we removed from the key port originally will go into the uh, male over here. Basically just adding a T to your uh, key port. That's what the T-harness does. All right, so with your T-harness, uh, you're gonna wanna go behind all of this so that you can have this long wire here sitting behind these bars up here. So just take this and put it around there. All right, so now we have our T-harness connected to the key port and I'm gonna go ahead and put the key port back in and then uh, try to get this black piece back in where it came from, which might be a bit of a struggle, but uh, not nearly as bad as the struggle that was trying to get this connector out. That was brutal. All right, key port slid back in nice and easy. I've got the wire hanging down here, and I'm gonna take my one little shorter screw, the uh, eight mil socket, and just screw this back in. So I'll hold the key port in place. All right, I screwed this uh, screw back in, and uh, you know, there's not really a torque spec for these, but don't over tighten them. You'll just break the threads and have a gigantic pain in the ass. So just tighten them to where they're not loose anymore and that should be good. All right, when you're getting this black piece back in, just make sure that you get this uh, hole back around that little post and then get the post back into its hole there. Uh, a little tricky get this back into place but not too bad and then you just got the two screws to reattach now when you're underneath the car putting this black piece back on you want to make sure that this wire here is not caught above the black piece for when you uh say screw it back in you don't want to crush these wires here so uh, if you did what i just did and basically put this black piece uh right on top of this wire you can kind of get the wire through this gap you just gotta i used a flathead screwdriver and went over here stuck it in there 
right in there and uh, turn it sideways to make some space and then move the wire back out so that it's not getting crushed. All right, so now we've got this uh, screw back in here. Again, that's the 10 mil and you wanna make sure the wires are clear before you put that in. And you just wanna make sure that this is all lined up before you start trying to screw things in. If, uh, if your screw doesn't, if your screw doesn't seem like it's lining up, then you probably have something not in place. Uh, you wanna make sure that that screw is gonna line up with its hole and uh, clear on everything over here. All right, now we gotta get this long one in back over here and that way, same place it came from. All right, we got that one back in. A little hard to see, but uh, it's in there. Again, that's the uh, M8 triple square. All right, now at this point, we should be about ready to start splicing the wires. And before we do that, it'd be a good idea to disconnect the battery so that uh, you don't shore anything, or if you accidentally cut the wrong wire, you're not gonna get any codes or blow up the car or whatever. All right, so first of all, the can high and can low wires can be accessed down here. However, there are a lot of braided orange wires, uh, as you can see. And personally, I didn't wanna pick the wrong ones. So I went with the alternative option, which is up here above the steering column. Uh, the can high and can low are here and they're the only wires that look like that. It's orange with a green stripe and orange with a brown stripe. The only other orange wires up here is a braided pair with a blue stripe and that's the wrong pair. So <sighs> I'm not gonna get the wrong wires if you come up here. Now, to get the uh, top of the steering column piece off, uh, it is just one screw. You go under here and it's uh, it's the, the big hole, the big hole where the screw goes. It's, it's pretty straightforward. And then this top piece will just pop right off and then you can see the wires will all be right here. And, um, and then you just splice the two wires, uh, the gray and gray with a black stripe to the two can high and can low wires being orange with a green stripe and orange with a brown stripe. Really not too complicated. And that's this little, uh, T here. I will, I will include some pictures in the write-up of, uh, of my splicing. Um, but basically wrapped the wire, added flux, and then soldered, and then did it with the other one as well. And then, uh, electrical tape to separate them, and then electrical tape around the whole thing, and it goes up here. And then I routed that just down, around, under everything over here. I mean, it's, it's really, you can route it wherever it fits, but back over and I have my remote start box sitting right here and it's not really secured there it's just kind of chilling Now for power and ground, those are actually pretty easy. They don't even require you to splice anything. Ground can go uh, literally anywhere pretty much. It just has to connect to the frame or the chassis of the car. So I put my ground right here, just to this metal piece, and it works. Uh, you can put it up in the engine bay if you want, or really anywhere that connects to the uh, frame or the chassis. Um, let me grab my hood latch real quick to open the hood. There we go. So the clutch bypass wire is going to be in the engine bay and the power wire is gonna be back here um, it's gonna be a little hard to film, um, but it is that screw back there. It's in the four in guide. They recommend using this power wire. Um, now there's already uh, a red wire going there. Basically I just unscrewed the screw and it comes off with the connector to the power wire. 
I took our new four in power wire, wrapped it around the uh, stud, and then screwed this right back on on top of it. Pretty tight, again, no torque specs in particular, but just as tight as it needs to be to hold the wire in place, and that's your power. And then for the clutch bypass, it's gonna be in the engine bay. And mine's already done, but I'll just take off the cowl for you all. All right, so I removed the cowl cover so that you all can see this. But uh, over here, we've got this fuse box for the positive connectors. And over here, you'll see there's this one, um, you know, bundle of wires that comes out this way and goes under here and, and goes in that direction. And then it comes into this connector here and you'll see uh, on both sides, there is a red wire with a black stripe. Now you're gonna wanna use the one on this side or maybe this would work anyway, but I went with the one on this side and I just wrapped the wire around it and then soldered it together. Uh, you gotta, uh, you know, cut the tubing off that wire to get a connection point. Um, my wire strippers did not work very well over here, so I ended up using an exact exacto knife to cut uh, basically a cylinder of the tube off of the wire to expose the wire, and then wrap and solder, and then cover in electrical tape again because uh, you don't want to short circuit anything or whatever. And right then to get. The um, clutch bypass wire is the yellow wire, not the pink wire. Uh, however, I don't know why my flash just went off. Uh, the yellow wire is not long enough to get there. So the yellow wire for me, uh, I routed up through the ECU area and it wasn't long enough. It reached right to here. So then I soldered the extra pink wire that I cut off earlier to here just, just to connect it to over there. But this is indeed the yellow wire for the clutch bypass. And uh, in order to route it through, I routed it the same place that I routed my boost tubing. If you've done that before, you can see the boost tube is right here. Um, I'm not going to take this back off, but um, above here is going to be your uh, windshield wiper fluid reservoir. Now, this is pretty easy to take off. It's one nut over here, and then you just kind of shimmy it out. All right, so once you've got the uh, windshield wiper reservoir off, you're gonna wanna take the ECU cover off. And it's just three T30 screws. This cover comes off and then the ECU will be right there. Uh, it's the silver rectangle with all the wires going into it. Two tabs holding it in. You just pull one tab this way, one tab that way, and then it'll pull straight out. Uh, it's the black tabs that are holding it in. Should be pretty obvious which ones to pull to get out of the way. ECU pulls straight out. You don't need to unplug those connectors. Just leave the ECU sitting to the side and you will see clear light of day down into the interior. Uh, and that's where you'll be working. And so you'll just send your clutch bypass wire straight up through that hole. And uh, for me, I went out through this, this little sort of tube area that goes into the ECU housing. Um, I cut a tiny little hole in it with an X-Acto knife and that's where both my clutch bypass wire and boost tube are routed. And then again, this is the yellow wire, not the pink wire. I just extended it with pink wiring. So I soldered it here to make it longer and then soldered it to clutch bypass over there. It uh, should be pretty straightforward, really. Um, and then you put the ECU back in, ECU cover back on, windshield wiper reservoir back on, cowl back on. And then coming down into the interior, I mean, you're, you're pretty much done wiring at this point. Um, now, at this point, uh, you are ready to start programming your EVO 1. So, <clears throat> if you've done everything that I've done, uh, that means you'll have your box, your Fortin EVO 1, sitting right here in the steering column area, kind of wherever, but wherever it fits. Now, I, I plugged everything in before I wired everything else, and keep in mind, the battery is still disconnected. I plugged everything into the EVO 1 and wired everything up, soldered everything that needed to be soldered, and it's ready to go. However, when you program the EVO 1, you do need to take uh, these connectors back out and use your Flashlink module, which I suppose I've brought inside, but it'll be pretty obvious. The Flashlink module plugs into the EVO 1 and that goes into the computer. Uh, you cannot have your EVO 1 plugged into the car when you plug it into your computer. And um, 
you, it's pretty straightforward, honestly, from there. You're just following Fortin's instructions in the guide to program it. You pick your settings, you flash the Evo 1, and then once it's flashed or updated, then you're ready to put it back in, and you put it in in the order it tells you to do. Uh, it's plug in this connector, this connector, this connector, whatever it says in the guide. And then you gotta follow its instructions to decrypt the key, which is, <clears throat> If you remember, there are those three uh, connectors we didn't plug in. There's the two black and one blue that were all jumbled together. We don't plug those in once it's all done, but right now you're gonna use the one four pin connector and plug it into the same place that you plugged in your flash link wire. It's the four pin. And that's what allows you to decrypt the key. It's like the data reading wire. So once you're done, you won't need that. But for this step of the process, for decrypting the key, you do need to plug in the four pin black connector into the Evo one, along with uh, whatever else it says to do. Then you're gonna, it's gonna tell you to like put the key in for a certain number of seconds and do whatever, turn the car on and off. And then, um, I don't remember what's next, but once it's, it's ready and your key is decrypted, um, then you'll, you'll, you'll unplug everything again, plug it back into the flash link, and um, you know it'll confirm your key is decrypted or whatever. And then you're ready to go, and it says you're ready to put it back into the car. You are not gonna use those three black, black, and blue connectors anymore. Uh, it'll just be the main connector, the long white connector on this side, short white connector, short red connector, and that's it. And the main connector is the giant six pin one. Once you have those four connectors plugged in, it's ready. Now, <clears throat> to arm the system on my car, I did brake and handbrake. It's the only one I know how to do, and I think it's the easiest one. So in order to arm it, uh, you're gonna wanna be in gear and come to a full stop. Um, and then, so it's gonna be, you push the brake in, go to neutral, and then pull up on the handbrake, and then you just get out of the car. You don't turn the car off. Once you get out of the car, about a few seconds later, it'll turn the car off for you, it'll lock the car for you, and that's how you know it's armed. And then when you come back, uh, I set mine to lock, lock, lock on the OEM key, and it starts up. Um, mine is set to three minutes, so if I don't get in the car after three minutes, it'll turn back off. You can set it to more than that if you want. Um, and I think you can set it to like, you know, if you do lock, lock, lock again, it'll turn the car off or whatever. But um, yeah, it's it's basically, once you have everything wired, it's just gonna be follow Fortin's guide directly as it shows it in the guide manual. And uh, as long as you're following those instructions and you flash the module properly and you plug everything in properly, it should work. Um, and then, uh, right, don't plug your battery back in until you you're ready to go basically um you don't want to have the battery connected while you're wiring things up um so i plugged my battery back in once i had everything wired and i'd already flashed the module i plugged the battery in and then i put the module back in decrypted the key took the module back out put the module back in and it was ready to go and once you test it and make sure that it works you can put your interior back together um, if you have questions and it's not working, you can ask me, or you can ask for in the support is actually pretty good. Um, but I'll be on Facebook or whatever. And, uh, yeah, and there will also be the written guide with pictures that I've, I've made as well. But it's really not too bad. I mean, it's, it's three wires that you have to solder, uh, two wires that you just screw in, one wire on the Evo 1 that you just connect to itself, and then it's just plug and play, and uh, you configure it on the computer and you're done. It's not too bad, really not too bad.